Assalamu alaikum. Welcome back. So, in the last video, I explained the possible options I could take for offline syncing mechanism and the problems I encountered and I foresee. So, in this video, I'm going to share the plan I took for the offline first approach or synchronization approach, not offline first, I can say. I can say that offline online synchro synchronization system approach. So I actually had the opportunity to uh, automate this for a customer I had in Bangladesh. So I first try to find the, the need where they want the offline feature, which actually causing them losing money if the system is actually get disconnected. So I found that after discussing with them, I found that uh, cell entry is the most important feature they want to have because if the connection drops and they don't entry the cell, the customer cannot purchase the goods or product. So it actually blocks the whole operation for the shop. So this one I actually figured out, okay, maybe I can automate this one first. Then I thought about what approach I should take. So if you are a developer, you, are, you should be familiar with the Git approach. So what we do in the Git is first we pull the latest code from the server, then we push our code to the server. So we cannot push our code before pulling. So if we have something in our server and we want to push it, we cannot. First we have to pull it, then we merge it in our local, then we can push the latest code to the server. This is the idea I wanted to share here, apply here. And also I wanted to leverage the infrastructure and the user base. So uh, I had the opportunity to educate the user base. So I had the salesman. So me or my teammate can go to the salesman and actually teach them, the, hey, this is how we can use for local usage. And also I had the experience working on Azure Cloud and I wanted to leverage the, uh, the local running for the Azure Cloud messaging service and connecting with the Azure Cloud into the online. So yeah, this is actually, I explained here. So this is the plan I take. So if you can see here that, that the green one is actually having the local setup and the cloud one is having the actual SaaS system or the actual the mother system, master system. So what happens in the right side is that I strip down the cell operation only here and publish here and set up the uh, operation for the local base. So local IIS, you can say. So the user inserts or operates into here in the local database. And after some time, suppose each in each five minutes, the timer service will run and it will pulls the, the latest code, latest data from the cloud. You can see in the left side. So it pulls the data from the server and it sets the data into the local database. And then it pulls the data from the local database, unsynced data, and I have the queue client here, Azure queue client, and it sends the data to the online queue, the Azure queue, into the Azure. And the Azure queue actually triggers another Azure function for this data, for each of the data. So I'm sending each of the data manually. And since the Azure queue can trigger an Azure function, this Azure function can have the business logic in it or it can actually call the API by itself. So uh, that's why I added the two arrow here. So either we can have the business logic separated 
uh, in here in the Azure function and directly call the database, similar as API. Or we can actually call the API from here and set the data to database. So that at the right side, in the green side, our unsynced data will be go to server and get synced. And the next time the timer service will pull, the latest data will come here. So just see the next uh, image here is, so if we replicate the green system for each of the branch, what will happen? So if the branch one actually pulls and pushes data, suppose x in the, suppose 7 p.m. and then uh, at 7, 1 p.m. branch two first pulls the data. So it can get the data from branch one because the branch one data is already into the Azure cloud. And then the branch two data will push to Azure cloud. And then whenever the other branches pulls the data, each of them can have the latest data from the Azure cloud. So this is what I meant by push and pull. And let's see the code. Uh, let's see the code now. Okay, so I am sharing my code right now. In here, you can see the config file. Just see my API, I, I removed actual URLs and actual information from here, but you can get the idea what I'm doing here. I can just zoom in a little bit, 140. Yep, I hope you can see it better now. So I have my actual Azure API URLs set here, and also my function URL, and username and password for logging into the system for calling the API. And I also have the queue name, and also I have the Azure queue connection string here. I hope you can see it clearly. And this one is my local database connection string because into the system you can see I'm sharing the local database here. So I need to set up the local database, okay? Now, what happens if I run this system? It is actually working system. I'm just showing you the code. So, when the f I open the form, what happens is it first gets the queue client because we want to send message to the queue, Azure queue, so we need a queue client in our local system. And it starts push and starts pull because both are different. So what happens is that you can see uh, in each of the one, two, three, four, five, six, ten 10 second, uh, I keep running this function. And what happens here is I push the data. So what inside of the push data? So I'm fetching the unsynced cells from my local database. That means from here, I'm pulling the unsynced data. And then I am actually preparing the messages here. And actually I'm then writing to the queue. Queue means this queue. Azure queue. So what happens now is I'm sending the message. That's all. I'm sending the message to the queue. And then what happens is this queue is listened by another function. Azure function I showed in here, this trigger. So I send the message to the queue. And now the queue triggers the Azure function. This one is my Azure function. So you can see I'm listening to the queue and I'm not, show, I'm not showing you the connection string. So this one is living into the cloud. So what I'm doing is I'm checking the business logics here, traditional business logics, and then I'm updating my cell related tables and also the transition tables in here and then i am uh, okay I'm, I'm i'm good so what happens the next time 
when it pulls the data okay so my pushing is done then I can show you the pull what happens now so this function so this two is actually getting the token okay this one is writing the log into the message uh, into the UI desktop UI so pull everything what's inside of it so you can see here I'm pulling the warehouse data I'm pulling the wallets I'm pulling the products pulling the customers so just let's just see the customers here for a bit so I'm preparing the payload and actually I'm calling that hey give me all of the data which is not I don't I, I didn't sync so where is it pull customers yep this one so yeah I'm calling actually the API with the pay request that hey I want to get the new data starting from this point to this point and the API is responding me the data and then I'm returning to the list and then I'm saving the new data to my local database so I'm saving the data to my local database so yep that's all I wanted to share and uh, one thing I want to say that this is my own implementation uh, you can actually mix and match your own way but my suggestion is that don't go for full-fledged offline online sync mechanism it doesn't make you any good because the actual business scenario the user doesn't need to have the full-fledged offline system uh, ready for him he doesn't need that he only needs the functionality where he actually should not cannot stop if the connection drops that's all he needs so we can d discuss and negotiate with the client for this the system client so yeah you can get the references from here as well uh, also I can store the data to table storage uh, but it is not used anymore you can see it is unused <sighs> give me a sec one thing I forgot to mention is that how can I know that this cell is synced or not synced this is the function so if you can see here that I am actually calling to the server with only one function sorry only with the ID that hey if this is exist or not to the actual server in here in the cloud so if it is exist I'm returning it true or false and yeah so if it exists I'm just updating the local st local state of the database so for example uh, the cell number is 001 and it is already synced with the uh, with the actual cloud server the next time it runs I actually calls the server hey 001 is synced or not if it is synced then I actually update the status in my local database that's all so that the next time I pull the unsynced data from my database I don't pull the synced status as you can see here I'm just filtering out so actually uh, it is running uh, to my customers system so they have I believe now 12 to 15 branches and all of the branches is actually using this system uh, perfectly fine everything is working perfectly fine so it is proven case so my summary is don't go for full-fledged offline sync feature just go with one by one case basis and you will come up with the solution according to your need and for the next phases uh, the next phase what we can suggest is that the whole green system can be actually uh, created through docker so if the if if you have the opportunity to containerize the whole system and make it as a docker then you just share the private docker repository with the customer and each of the branch branch user will just run the docker up sorry docker compose up 
and the whole system will go up uh, whenever the uh, he runs the, the command. You know, he's, he's a, he doesn't have to run the code and the other stuff manually. So it's, it's, it's up to you, me, how we are going to implement the local system. But this is the way I did, and it is actually proven good to me. So if, if anyone wants to do that again, I'll probably go with this approach, but with more containerizing way. So yep, that's all. I hope it helps you. Thanks for watching. Assalamu alaikum.